Today I wanted to talk a bit about the monetary aspects of KDE. Now there are some people wondering whether KDE is a company or not and it is not. It is a non-profit organization which means that it isn't meant to make money and because of that it has some restrictions as an example uh, like the money that it actually makes has to be spent within a certain period of time. Now Let's start from the beginning. How much money and how does KD actually earn money? Because even though it's a non-profit, we do uh, can get some money. There are some restrictions on how, like we cannot sell products, but we have this nice graph done by the Financial Working Group that tell us how the money is actually coming in from KD. So this is income and it's uh, mostly supporting members and donations. So it's, it's actually mostly about uh, donations as a whole. And there are, there are many ways to donate to KDE. There's even like a PayPal, but there's also, and this is probably a better way, a donation system in uh, KDE.org. Now, the do donation system is actually getting uh, revamped. Uh, there is a working group whose name I currently forgot that is working to do a new uh, way that will make it easier to donate to KD. There's also, we can see your Academy and Google Summer of Code, which are a minority and I mean, often goes to actually, uh, the Academy one is balanced by the Academy one here in expenses. In here, we also get patrons, patrons, sorry and patrons are the ones that are listed at the bottom of kd.org web pages canonical google susan and dot and so on Be, uh, within the patrons we do see blue systems and uh, keep in mind this one because it will actually be important so let's go see what KD actually does with the money, so expenses. And we can see that mostly it's about staff and contractors. Uh, before we get into that, also let's give a quick look to the other things. Of course, organizing academy, which is the event that's every year and everybody goes there, like every KD developer or ver people very interested in KD go there and uh, there's a lot of talks about what's KDE, what KDE is doing, but also uh, BOFs to actually for developers to discu discuss things on how to do things. A pretty nice event. I, I joined the first one a couple of years ago and it was very nice. So of course I'm counting like uh, the last two were online. So that's not the same thing. So hopefully the next one, which is in place will be super cool. And then other things like infrastructure, office sprints is interesting. It's about organizing a smaller group of developer to all see in a place for like, I don't know, a week as, a, as an example and all work for that week on something together, which is pretty cool. I, I've never been to a sprint unluckily because you know, the pandemic and then taxes and stuff. So staff and contractors, that means there is some stuff, which is most of the expenses. So it would be rightful to ask, okay, so the staff is probably the developers. How much are the developers paid? And it's not actually the developers. Right now there is uh, no developer that is being paid by KDE to work on KDE software. So you might ask, okay, but are the are all the people then volunteers? And kind of, there's also people paid by third um, companies, like third party companies, let's call them like that, that companies that are not KDE, that pay people to work on KDE and that, happens because there's a lot of software that actually relies on KDE. And a pretty important one is Blue Systems. Before we get into that though, okay, stuff, then what is stuff? Who is being paid inside of KDE? And there are some people that are being paid. So as an example, some people in the promotion group that do actually as a work promoting KDE, managing the social media, actually putting together these uh, reports on the KDE AV website, these sort of things. There are people that are actually paid to do them. Then other stuff like one person a while ago was paid to do a review of the documentation and what had to be done to, to improve it. But also there is a community manager that 
between other staffs also organizes how goals uh, work inside of KDE and I'm a goalkeeper so that's pretty important to me. Those sort of stuff that are all related, that are all not related to development can be paid directly by KDE. So you might ask, okay, but is not paying developer then like a choice that was made? And it, it is like it, the KDE community at a certain point decided not to hire any developers. However, recently there is a strong ongoing movement to change that and to actually hire some people focused on development. But uh, up until now, it hasn't quite worked. There are some positions, I think, that are still open. And those positions are not related to like KDE core uh, products, like, as I don't know, I don't know uh, the Plasma Shell as an example. I think there is one for hardware development, that sort of things. So Blue System, who are they? So Blue System is founded uh, by a person, uh, this is my understanding of it, a person that I had, had a lot of money and decided to do some good stuff and that good stuff included doing, yes, some products by Blue System itself, but also work on some projects that are not directly done by Blue Systems. As an example, KD Plasma, Plasma Mobile, Manjaro, KD Neon, and a lot of stuff that KD actually relies on a lot. There are, uh, I think, about like five to eight developers from Blue Systems working full time on uh, KD Plasma and related projects. But of course, being employed at Blue Systems also means that you don't just work on KD Plasma, but also on the products that are made by Blue Systems and the things that Blue Systems thinks are important. In this case, the products I see here is there's this Netrunner, which is a Linux distribution, and there's also this uh, C1 ARM powered microcomputer, which is out of stock, if you were wondering. Uh, so maybe it will get in stock, but I only today learned about it. It sounds interesting, but you know, this is the stuff that uh, I'm most interested in. All of the other people actually working on KDE that are not being employed by other companies, like me, are doing this basically as volunteers. So the vast majority of people working on KDE are not actually paid to do it. There is, and this is pretty interesting, uh, Libra Pay, Libra Pay, uh, KD account with a lot. Hello, Libra Pay, KD, KD, hello, okay, community. There is a Libra Pay community for KD people, and you can actually see that some people, let's take uh, Clau as an example, it's 11 euros every week. It's not a lot, but uh, it's a way to try to do. Oh, it's me, hello. I also have a Patreon though. Uh, it's a way to try to take some donations through th other ways to actually finance the way to work on KDE. Most of the people I know from KDE work on it on their free time. And uh, as far as I know, as statistics go, the vast majority of people working on KDE do it on their free time. Personally, it was a bit hard for me because my free time, I could have more free time if I hadn't to do like um, other part-time jobs. So what I tried to do was this channel and then set up a Patreon. And I actually managed to do a decent amount of donation money plus advertisement. It's not enough to make a living out of it at all, but um, it's something that actually helps me a lot to keep on going. It's It means that every time I see a part-time job offer, I can say, nah, I'm good, kind of, kind of. So that was everything from me and on my left on my right which is your left you can see actually the patrons that are giving me money monthly which is super duper appreciated because of the reason that i've just talked about and also people doing donations so if you want to help me get my channel going and also keep me working on KDE, i'm trying to do like my best there and trying to work a bit more on KDE these weeks and i'm finishing up a complete rewrite of KDE panels and then i will finish up floating 
panels and then floating applets. Hopefully this whole thing will be ready for KD Plasma 5.25. So if you want to help me do that, Meanwhile, you can also subscribe and those sort of stuff. If you can't afford uh, like donations, that's fine. Subscribing also helps me to actually go with the channel. And that's about it. See you tomorrow.